In order to properly set up WordPress, there are some options and settings that you'll want to configure. These settings range from search engine optimizations to customizations and security settings to general best practices. Oftentimes, beginners are not aware of these steps, so that's why I decided to make this video for you today. Before we're going live with your website, here are 15 important things to do after you install WordPress. All right, let's get right into it. Number one here, change the site title and tagline. First and foremost, you want to change the site title and tagline for your website. From the WordPress admin dashboard, you can do this under settings, then click on general. By default, these values are my WordPress site and just another WordPress site, but please change these to something that makes sense for your website. Number two, change your website to URL. On that same page, you'll see the WordPress address URL and site address URL. If you have an SSL certificate installed, which is critical now since Google favors websites that use HTTPS, you want these URLs to start with HTTPS. Now, if you don't have an SSL certificate installed, then you can install one for free with Let's Encrypt. Otherwise, I would check with your hosting provider. Number three, discourage search engines from indexing this site. Unless you're already at a point where you have a few blog posts and pages ready to go, you'll want to tell search engines like Google that your website is not quite ready yet. You can do this under settings reading by clicking on the checkbox next to discourage search engines from indexing this site. Just remember to uncheck this box when you're ready to go live. Number four, use the post name permalink setting. By default, WordPress uses a pretty ugly URL structure for your blog posts and pages, and search engines don't like this either. To change your URL structure to something that's not only human readable, but also SEO friendly, go to settings permalink and select the post name option. Number five, pick your public display name. By default, WordPress will display your username as the author of your blog posts. This is okay in some cases, but most people will probably want to change this. From the WordPress admin dashboard, go to users profile and fill out the name section. In doing so, you'll have the option of choosing a customized display name. Number six, delete sample content. WordPress comes with some demo content, including a sample blog post with a comment and a couple of pages. You don't want this on your website, so you'll want to get rid of it. To delete the blog post and comment, go to posts, all posts, and click on the trash link that's associated with the Hello World blog post. To delete the pages, go to pages, all pages, click on the checkbox at the very top, and from the bulk actions drop down menu, select move to trash, and then click on apply. Number seven, delete unused themes. WordPress also comes pre-installed with a handful of themes. You can only use one theme at a time, so let's get rid of the other ones that are just taking up space. Go to Appearance, Themes, and for every theme that you're not using, click on Theme Details and then Delete. Number eight, add a site icon, also known as a fave icon. If you're not familiar, a fave icon is the tiny icon in your web browser that you see next to a website's page title. To add a fave icon for your WordPress website, go to Appearance, Customize, Expand Identity, and Upload Your Image. As it says, a site icon should be square and at least 512 by 512 pixels. If you don't have a fave icon, then you can create one for free online with Canva. Number nine, choose a theme for your website. A fresh install of WordPress comes with the latest default theme, which is usually the current year spelled out. If you're looking for a customizable theme that's notorious for its speed, then I recommend Generate Press, which I use for just about all of my websites. Otherwise, a great free WordPress theme is the Hello theme by Elementor. Moving right along to number 10, uninstall the default plugins. WordPress comes pre-installed with just two plugins, Akismet Anti-Spam and Hello Dolly. If you have more than two plugins installed and this is your first time accessing your WordPress website, then your hosting provider has installed additional plugins for you. While Hello Dolly is completely useless and everyone should remove it, a kismet is worth checking out. Although I personally prefer to prevent spam with reCAPTCHA, which brings us to number 11, prevent spam with reCAPTCHA. The first of just a few plugins that I'm gonna recommend that you install is a reCAPTCHA plugin for WordPress. This free plugin will stop bots from making spam comments on your blog posts. I have a full video on this topic, but real quick to add this plugin, simply go to plugins, add new, type in reCAPTCHA by best web soft, click install now, and then activate. Number 12, add a blacklist. What about humans though? They are 100% capable of spamming your website even with a reCAPTCHA plugin installed. 
So for that, you can implement a WordPress blacklist, which is essentially a list of bad words that you don't want to appear in the comments section of your website. Again, I have a full video on how to do this, but just so you know, a blacklist can be configured by going to settings, discussion, and adding your keywords in the disallowed comment keys box. Number 13, install a search engine optimization plugin. Another plugin that pretty much every WordPress website needs is an SEO plugin. Now, if you're not familiar, SEO is an acronym that stands for search engine optimization, and that's really just a fancy way to describe the process of helping search engines like Google include your website in search results. I personally use the free version of the Yoast SEO plugin on my websites. Similar to before, simply go to plugins, add new, search for the Yoast SEO plugin, and then click on install now and activate to add this plugin. Yoast not only helps you craft better blog posts by analyzing your writing in real time, but it also scans your content and gives you SEO tips and suggestions that will help your pages rank higher in search results. Number 14, install Google Analytics. As your website grows in popularity, it's important to understand where your visitors are coming from, what pages they visit, and how long they stay on your website. Google Analytics is built specifically for this, and you can integrate it into your website with the official Google Analytics plugin called SiteKit. Again, simply go to Plugins, Add New, search for SiteKit, and then click on Install Now and Activate to add this plugin. After linking your Google account, you will have more than enough data to understand the analytics of your website. Number 15, optimize WordPress. Plugins are great because they add functionality to your website, but too often website owners will overdo it and install way too many plugins. I recommend having no more than 10 plugins installed at a time on your website. With that said, there are three performance enhancing plugins that every WordPress website should have. They are page caching, fine tuning, and image optimization. Rather than go into it here, check out this playlist for a detailed walkthrough of these critical plugins and check out some of my other videos to help you get started with WordPress. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.